Developing a strong back is a common training goal. Not only does a strong back look aesthetic, having well-developed back muscles also helps improve your posture and it supports the spine during the performance of compound exercises. But there are many theories out there in terms of how you can train your back muscles. It's not always clear how you can go about effective back training. So in today's video, I will discuss 7 quick key tips on how you can more effectively train your back. If you get these 7 quick tips right, you will have an effective back training routine on your hands. At the end of the video, I will also show you a practical example routine that puts the principles discussed in today's video in a simple training plan. Let's dive straight into the video by discussing the first and most important tip, which is training your back muscles from different angles. The back is sometimes seen as one muscle that you can train with rows or pulldowns. But in actuality, there are a variety of back muscles that require different exercises for them to develop effectively. So we want to train from a variety of angles while training the back. Your back training can be divided into two main categories. We have horizontal pulls and vertical pulls. Old school bodybuilding textbooks state that vertical pulls are more responsible for back width, while horizontal pulls are effective for increasing back thickness. There is some truth to this, but depending on your elbow angle, you can target different areas of your back with both horizontal and vertical pulls. With a vertical pull, you can focus more on your lats when you maintain a shoulder width or narrow grip. This is because the lats muscle fibers run diagonally down, so when you maintain a more narrow grip, the resistance moves more in line with the lats muscle fibers. For more upper back stimulation with vertical pulls, a wider grip is helpful, because the resistance runs more in line with the upper back area. A similar principle holds true with horizontal pulls. When you maintain a wider grip, you pull your elbows towards the upper back region and muscles like the rhomboids, straps and rear delts need to work harder. While with the V-grip row, the resistance runs more in line with your lats. In essence, if you maintain four different types of pull variations in your back workout routine, you will be able to train the back area in a balanced manner. We want horizontal pulls with a wide and narrow elbow angle and also doing vertical pulls with a wide and narrow elbow angle. This will hit the majority of your back muscles and you can be confident that you will be training the back in a balanced way. Now that we know what exercise variations we need to effectively target the back, let's look into how you can actually effectively engage these back muscles during the compound exercises. Because it's common for people to not feel their back working while doing different back lifts. So the second tip is about having two simple cues that will help you more effectively challenge the back. And the first cue is making sure that you pull via your elbows whenever you do a pull exercise. If you just pull the weight up and down, your biceps will likely take over the movement. Think about not just moving your hands back, but actually pulling via your elbows. If you just pull the weight up and down without much thought, your biceps will likely take over the movement. Something that can help with this is maintaining a thumbless grip during your pull exercises. Treat your hands simply as hooks that attach to the weight and pull the weight back with your elbows. This typically makes a big difference in terms of back engagement. The third tip about back training is about how you move your scapula during pull variations. A common question during rows and pull downs is whether you should keep your shoulder blades retracted during the movement or let your scapula move freely. For most people, I would suggest letting the scapula move freely because the rhomboids and traps are responsible for training scapular retraction and we want to develop these muscles as well during our pull exercises. To also properly stimulate your upper back muscles and train with more range of motion, we want your shoulder blades to actively protract and retract during back exercises. This applies to both horizontal and vertical pull variations. You don't get the full benefits from the exercise if you try to keep the shoulder blades constantly retracted. Let the scapula run its natural course as you pull the weight and release. The opposite extreme is of course that protraction is exaggerated and you use more momentum during rows, but that's not what we are going for. Keep your upper body mostly stationary as you perform back exercises. The fourth tip is about another back muscle that we haven't discussed yet and that is the spinal erectors. The spinal erectors stabilize your spine whenever you are in a bent over position. They are kind of the opposite of your abs where if you do a plank variation then your abs will stabilize your torso, while with something like a bent over row your spinal erectors are the ones that are stabilizing your torso. The spinal erectors get trained well during deadlifts and bent over row variations, but also with movements like a barbell squat, the spinal erectors will achieve a good amount of stimulation. So if you have a bent over row variation in your training routine and you also do some squats or deadlifts in your training program, the spinal erectors will typically get enough stimulation. Making sure you have 1-3 to three movements in your training week that put you in a hinged position is key to help you stimulate the spinal erectors. And now up to tip number 5 and that is doing at least one unilateral back exercise in your training week. It is common for people to experience that one side of the back is stronger or more developed than the other. Training each side individually via a single arm row or pull down will help you focus on strengthening each side on its own. This will help correct any existing muscle imbalances. 
I would maintain at least one single arm back exercise in your training week. If you notice that there is a large imbalance in strength between both sides, you can decide to do more single arm back exercises. Tip number six is about doing some bodyweight exercises in your back training as well. Exercises like pull-ups and inverted rows will help you train the back using your own body weight, improving your pulling strength relative to your own body weight. I credit the majority of my back development to being able to do more pull-ups over time because as you get stronger in exercises like pull-ups and inverted rows, your back muscles have no other option than to develop along. This is why I suggest maintaining at least one bodyweight exercise in your training week. If doing traditional pull-ups is tough, then doing something like negative pull-ups or leg-assisted pull-ups is also a good option. I'll be sure to link a video in the description below that shows a clear pull-up progression you can use to improve your pull-up strength. The seventh and final tip is about training programming. We now know what types of exercises we need to do for balanced back development. But how much total back training you should be doing throughout the week is of course also a key variable. How much total back training you need will also depend on the individual. But as shown in one of my previous volume videos, we know that training each muscle group with about 10 to 20 sets per week is a good aim. So depending on your experience level, you can decide with how many sets you will train the back muscles in a single week. If you are an intermediate trainee and train your back with about 12 to 16 sets in a week, that's about 4 to 5 back exercises in a single training week. We typically want to distribute this training volume over 2 to 3 training days. If you do 16 sets of back training in one day, chances are that on the last 4 sets of that back session, your performance won't be that good. So distribute your volume for better performance. And this immediately brings us to the example routine that I promised you at the beginning of the video, in which we take these 7 key tips and put them into one practical training routine. Let's say you train your upper body two times per week. Well, as you can see, we have horizontal and vertical pull exercises in which you maintain a wide and narrow elbow angle. We also have one bodyweight back exercise and a back exercise that trains one arm at a time. One of our back exercises also requires you to be in a bent over position, which helps you train the spinal erectors. You can take this as a template for your back training, but of course, feel free to tailor the exercises based on your preference and training needs. And that was all for today's video. I hope this gives you a more practical idea on how you can go about effective back training. If you found this video helpful, then I would appreciate your support by leaving me a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And I will see you in that next video.